The reason that you would want to use image slicing for the web is if you have an image that's larger than 20 to 30 k in size. If it's larger than that, it could load slowly. And on the web, time is everything. You have about 10 seconds for your web page to load, otherwise you'll lose your audience. If you slice an image into sections, it means that the image will load relatively quickly section by section and will give your user information about how fast the page is loading. In this particular case, this image is 70k in size and it will benefit from image slicing. To get into image slicing, what we need to do is activate the slicing tool on the bottom left here. Notice that when I click on it, the image winds up with a green overlay and this indicates that the, the image slicing tool is active. In this case, it also brings up the image slicing dialog box, which gives you information about slice settings, such as importing or exporting a slice grid, saving a preset, and then it also gives you the name, URL, alt, and target settings here. The name allows you to enter in a file name of your choice. The URL will trigger a, a web page if you want it to do that. Alt is where you can type in more information about the file, such as specific keywords. Target is where you want the page to load and format in this particular case is JPEG and you can also choose from many other options from this pop-up list. Another option is to click on the advanced tab and this allows you to optimize each slice individually according to your specifications. Okay so now we're ready to begin. So we have a number of image slicing tools at the top left here and to give you an idea of how it works the horizontal tool is active and I'm just going to put in a few slices so you can see how the tool works. Okay, so now that we have a number of slices in place, if for any reason you decide you don't like the position of the slice, you can click on the slice selector, choose a given slice in the image, and move it around to a new position. If you don't like the way a slice looks, you can also erase it can click on the erase tool and erase by slice. The other option is if you don't like the layout of the slices and the way it looks on your screen you can choose to erase the whole bunch and start from scratch. So if you click on erase all slices you wind up back with a green overlay and you're ready to start again. Another option is to click on the equal slice button. This brings up the equal slice grid dialog box and this allows you to choose how many rows and columns of slices you want for a given image. In this case it defaults at five for rows and columns but you can change that. Say three for rows, four for columns, press an OK and there you have it. If you don't like this you can start again and erase all slices. So let's go back to what we had before. I have a particular slicing setup which I like and this is what I'm going to stick with for this particular image. Now that I have the slicing layout that I want to use I'm ready to save the image. So I go under File, Export for Web and this brings up the Export for Web dialog box first thing I want to make sure of is that I have a file name typed in, in this case it's Mach 10, which is what I've been using for my layout. I want to make sure that the HTML and Images button is enabled. I want to make sure that the Slices button or the Slices checkbox is enabled. And under Image Destination I want to click on Use HTML Name for Image Subfolder. I also want to make sure that the Display in Browser option is checked so that when I click on save it will bring up the browser showing me what my sliced image will look like when it's finished. So now I click on save and now you see what the finished image looks like in the browser. If you want to see what the source code for the sliced image looks like you can go under view source and in notepad this brings up the HTML information for the image which you can then copy and paste into another file. The other option is you can go to the directory where the image information was saved and you have all the, the image components, the folder in which they were saved, and the HTML file. And you're done.